Hey, this is the Ranch Ferry, and um, I've always had a question. We just did a big uh, video with the hunting public, and they shot their bows through the lab radar. And we got to talk about kinetic energy, momentum, speed erosion, and that kind of thing. So what we did, me and Dale Barnett, this should be considered some of the preemptive uh, testing for the Ashby Foundation. This was all done with private funds, and me and Daryl paid for it. The lab radar in the unit, or in this video that was used, is Daryl's. He owns it himself. And we took our own time to go find out what happens when we take m multiple bow platforms and shoot multiple different masses of arrows through multiple bow platforms and what happens to speed over time, you know, over distance. And we shot out to 60 yards. So it matches the test we did with the hunting public. And you should expect this information to be referenced back once we start the testing with the Ashby Foundation. So this is why you donate to the Ashby Foundation so we can start buying gear. I just got the first uh, Ashby Bow Hunting Foundation lab radar. So thanks to all the donors out there for the money you're sending in. That helps us buy all kind of cool toys. And we're going to continue to do this testing. I'm going to do a series here on speed erosion. I'm going to take the same data set and run it through kinetic energy, zero to 60. And then I'm also going to take the same data set and punch it out zero to 60 for momentum. So stay tuned for that. The information is pretty interesting and uh, much more granular, a little bit more refined since we changed arrow mass and went from about 380 to 715 grains, somewhere in there, and shot six different arrows through three different bow platforms. Pretty interesting. And thanks for watching. This video is about speed erosion. So Big Mike was the first guy to show me this in a graph. And then I met the rocket man. So what we did was, this is what's called a lab radar. Here's a picture of the screen. The gizmo has a, a, a radar that shoots a, a beam out. And we tested zero to 60 yards. We put the target at 70. So you want to catch the arrow flying. You don't want, if it hits the target at 60, you can get some erroneous readings because it could, you know, be just at that distance or under and the arrow would stop. So then the, the values would be incorrect for flight speed. So what we did is we put the target at 70. Here's kind of a close up. We put the pig way out there and we stood it on its end like this just to shoot at a big tall target. It doesn't matter where you hit, it just needs to fly in the cone of the radar. Remember, we're just, we're just testing speed. There's a lot of data. So <laughs> when you pull this thing and start graphing it and stuff, it wasn't for any lack of effort on our part to try to get this right, okay? If we find out we're wrong, I'll just delete this video and we'll start over again. But this kind of data is pretty simple. One of the biggest mistakes when people do these kind of tests is they don't bear shaft, they don't knock tune, they don't make sure the arrow flight's consistent. So if you just took a five, you know, say a 300 spine arrow and you loaded it up and you started with 125 and 150 and 200, those would probably fly. But when you start pushing to 300, 350 grain points to get a really high forward to center arrow and a heavier projectile to fly, your, if your arrow flight's erratic, it's also gonna give you bad readings. So I sat in the garage and I banged away and I made sure that the arrows were flying perfectly. There's only one arrow, the 388 grain arrow. My buddy Joe was down and he had some really light, I don't know what they were, but they were 388 grains. I weighed them on a scale and we shot them through the bow. So if there's one arrow that wasn't, I know I didn't bear shaft, it's that one. But all the rest of them I bear shafted. So the arrow weights that we came up with were 388, 436, 514, 589, 616, 670, and 718. And you can see the progression. I tried to keep them pretty close together because I wanted the data set to be pretty compressed. And then these weights are reasonable for an average person to get them to fly. When you get over 750 grains, it takes some tinkering. And the really light stuff's a pain in the neck too to really get to fly right. So I tried to stay within a normal realm of achievable arrow masses. We could have shot a, we have a 1,000 grain tungsten rod that goes inside of a serious 204 shaft, and we could have made a 2,000 grainer, but it's not practical for hunting and for long range hunting. Our high launch speed was 294, and our low launch speed was only 282, so it wasn't really a wide gap. That was the lightest arrow, 388 grains launch means at, you know, right, the radar sits right here and we were shooting right next to it. What happens if you're shooting, let's say you are Western hunting and you are shooting out at 60 
or further, we can reverse engineer that mathematically, but I don't care about doing that right now. I just want to show you the results of the speed erosion, and then I have a really practical uh, example for you to look at. We shot a dual cam bow, we shot a solo cam bow, and then I shot a really fast six inch brace height bow with really aggressive cams that, I mean, when you get the full draw and hit the back wall, if you twitch, it wants to go. So like I said, the, the high velocity was 294, and the low launch speed with the, uh, the solo cam was the slower one, was only 282. So it wasn't like it was, you know, we're not launching a 388 grain arrow going 240 feet per second. Okay, so you're probably gonna wanna stop on the screenshots. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drain the slides. And here's the results. So the dual cam system, 65 pounds at 28 and a half inches is my bow. The 388 grainer lost 31 feet per second over 60 yards. The 718 grain arrow only lost 14 feet per second. Sure, the velocity difference is pretty significant at launch, but what that contributes, and I'll show you some examples of this, if the arrow is not slowing down, the parabola that it flies on, the curve that it flies on is not like this. It's more consistent over distance. And when you see my examples, it may click. The next bow we shot, uh, at least in the graphs, is the really fast bow with a, with a six inch brace height. It lost 35 feet per second with a 388 grainer. And for, again, 14 feet per second with a 718 grainer. So it matched, the low speed con was consistent. The high speed was a little bit more erosion over distance. And then finally, the solo cam system, it lost 35 feet per second. And again, the heaviest arrow only lost 14 feet per second. So what we're seeing is on the, you know, the higher end of the spectrum, we're seeing this more consistent. They're all the same, which is really interesting. I didn't expect that. I expected it to erode kind of consistently but it, in the low and the higher arrow weights, the, dis, the difference between the, the speed erosion starts to compress and get narrower. These are screenshots of my buddy with the solo cam pins. And you can see that his pin gaps slowly open up over distance. And I, I think that's harder to manage. So if you got a gap, shoot it, and the, you know, 20, 30, 40 is usually pretty practical. And then you start reaching out to 60 and 70. These single pin slider guys aren't gonna see this, but it's the same thing. The gaps open up over distance. So I said, hey, um, can you send me a picture of your sun sights? Cause he shoots a similar bow, similar arrow mass currently, maybe a little heavier, but not, not 200 grains heavier. And let me see what his sights look like. And he said, sure. So here's a picture of his, and again, you see a progressive opening of the pin gaps over distance, which reflects that speed erosion being the highest. The lightest arrow had the most erosion over distance. So then I said, I remember a, a screenshot my buddy Jake sent me, and his wife shoots 200 feet per second. She shoots an arrow in the mid 500s, I think, and she's 24 inch draw, and her bow's in the low 40s, like 44 pounds. Here's a picture of her pins. Now, we were talking about the EZV site. And when I first discovered this, when I started, when I got to 600 grains, when I was really new at this, I was really exploring it. I went to my 3D range. You've all got one that the targets don't move around much. You kind of know the distance. And I'd shot it a million times. And I started shooting high. And I did not know, I didn't understand what was going on. I went from like a 450, I changed the easy V insert out a couple, you know, 10 or 15 feet per second, slower because I was going to 600 grains and it still shot high, like the arrows were going faster. And they weren't, they're just carrying better because they're not slowing down as fast over distance. I adjusted my sights, went up, and then at closest it shot low. And I just went, what the heck? So I called Jake and said, what is this? <laughs> he said, the arrows aren't slowing down. I said, what? It's, isn't it consistent? He said, no, it's not consistent. So this is a picture of Emily's um, bow. It's running 200 feet per second. And he put a 240 foot per second insert against it. 
to show that what was happening. He said, oh yeah, you just gotta get a faster insert because Aaron's EZV site's based on speed and an average carry. But what we're seeing with this low erosion over distance is a more consistent parabola, right? It's just a curve. It's the same. Look at our pin gaps. It's a 44 pound bow going 200 feet per second with a 500 plus, oh, I bet she's at 550 or 575. But if you look at that, and then you look at the other guys' bows, the, the light arrows and the faster bows, you see what is reflected in the data. So I'm not gonna make any more comments about this. So this is just math. Go back to the screenshots and look at the, the speed erosion tables. Like I said, I wasn't gonna drain them. So if you're planning to shoot 60, 70 yards at something, and you think that you're saving yourself this misjudgment problem of an animal, you laser them, you draw, they walk, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But um, with all the technology and the lasers and the sights and everything and the accuracy of the bows and the arrow systems these days, I don't, I don't, I just don't think that's the problem and I don't know. So I think it's a theoretical uh, problem we're making. And I think it really doesn't matter. I think you could practice and then what you should do is shoot an arrow over 550 grains perfectly tuned with a cut on contact broadhead. And I think what you should do is laser your target and then walk back five paces in practice. Cause you're gonna do that anyway. If you're shooting a light arrow and you draw on an elk at 62 yards and then he takes four steps, you're still gonna hold off. If you're at full draw, you're still gonna go, that's probably about this much and shoot. I mean, some of you are gonna be really, you know, maybe let down and re-laser them. That would be great. I, I, I'm all for accurate shooting. Got that. But if you're a full draw and he's going to walk in the bushes or he's following a cow and he lays around at 62 and he keeps walking, you're just going to probably raise up and go, that's about right and shoot. So you could practice that situation by lasering something and then just walk back five paces and, and spitball shoot it. So you learn. That's how we used to do it in the old days. We used to practice that stuff so that we are more practical in the field because that is a realistic situation. All right, I'll let this sit out there. Look at the graphs, more coming. Of course, kinetic energy is easy to uh, extrapolate from this. I have another video coming up on that. So if, if it's not up yet, thank you for watching. If it is, look for the next one. I'm gonna have a whole series and eventually there'll be three videos I'm gonna do. This is speed. I'm gonna do kinetic energy, I've already graphed that, and then I'm gonna do momentum, which is really the, the thing you need to be looking at.